On everyone, NBA season is officially here and the Lakers start off tonight against the Gold State Warriors and I cannot wait. Uh, hopefully we go out, we get that W, we get the job done tonight. Uh, well, I wanted to talk about like our, our like MVPs, our, like you know most improved, things like that. I wanted to kind of categorize some of these guys and, and give my first thoughts before we jump into the season on, on who I think will, you know, will be like our defensive player. I'm not saying for the league, I'm talking about just the Lakers. Like who on the Lakers do I think are going to make the most impact, stuff like that. And of course, I want to hear your thoughts and opinions on this as well down in the comment section below. So diving right into it, Russell Westbrook, I think it's going to depend on what he primarily does. And then of course, also if he gets traded, but let's go under the assumption he plays the whole season, right? Because we don't know if a trade is ever going to materialize. So going on the assumption that Russ is going to be on the team this whole season, I think it boils down to, is he our starter or is he, is he come out as the sixth man? If he's our sixth man, I really believe he could win sixth man of the year in the league. Like, and I definitely think he would be our sixth man for the team. I think having Russell Westbrook as a sixth man, I think would be huge for the Lakers. I don't think there's a team in the league, even the Warriors, that wouldn't have Russell Westbrook as their sixth man. His ability to go get you 30 if you need it, uh, put up a triple double, stuff like that. And you would allow, it would allow Russ to kind of be Russ more than if he was in the starting lineup. So I completely understand Russell Westbrook being able to be the be the sixth man and really just kind of be Russ, operate as Russell Westbrook, I think could be huge. But I think it comes down to how many games does he start as a starter? How many games is he on the bench as a sixth man? I think that's what it boils down to. But if he gets primary, primary minutes off the bench, I really think he could be sixth man for the Lakers and even for the entire league. Um, but if not... I think Kendrick Nunn is going to come off the bench more times than not. And I just think he's a guy that could give you 20 points night in and night out off the bench. So I think he's a guy that's going to be our sixth man, assuming Russ isn't on it. I mean, he could even be our sixth man, even if Russ does come off the bench. I mean, having Kendrick Nunn, a guy, he's he's our best three-point shooter. We've been able to see him in preseason shoot uh, on the catch and shoot uh, in transition. We've seen him be able to, you know, kind of just within the flow of, of, you know, of his movements and game. Uh, I, I love that. I love what we've seen from Kendrick Nunn, be able to get to the basket and go score. I mean, he's been, we've seen him put up 20 on several occasions in just limited minutes. I think if he was given, you know, 25 minutes a game, I think he easily could be a 15 to 20 point a game guy off the bench. And I think he could be huge for this team. Uh, you could have him in the starting lineup. You could have him off the bench. His versatility of being able to handle the ball uh, and initiate the offense as well as play off the ball, I think is huge. Um, he's just a really solid player. And I'm really excited for him. And if Russ isn't off the bench, I really think Kendrick Nunn would be our sixth man of the year. And I really think that he is he's going to have a huge... I really believe he's our X-Factor, period. I really do. I think the games that he comes in and he puts up 15 to 20, I think those are the games we win. I really do. I, I think he is just, his impact on this team is going to be just ridiculous. It really is. Um, but next up, uh, sticking with Russ, uh, I wanted to put him as most improved because I really think from what we've seen in preseason, him, him just trying to play defense, fighting over screens, going to closeouts, being patient, right? We saw on several occasions, he has the ball. It's a three-on-one. Usually, Russ just pile drives into those guys and tries to get a layup, but instead, he would slow it down, bring it out, let the offense come in. I think we're going to see a different Russell Westbrook this year, and if the Lakers are good and are winning games, Russ is going to contribute to that, and I think that he's going to be our most improved uh, if, if he's solid. I mean, Look, the guy put up 18-7-7 and in a dismal year and what many people believe was his worst season. And still, like, that's that's a stat line that some stars can't even do, right? So, I mean, Russ still has that Russell Westbrook inside of him. Uh, it's just, can he can he bring the best out in that? Is he a guy that can, that can you know, be effective and efficient? Um, you know, even if, he, even if he comes off the bench and he is really good off the bench, he would still be most improved. You know, I just I just think however you slice it, I think I think Russell Westbrook is going to be the most improved for the Lakers. Not just that, but there's not many guys that were on the team last year that are on the team this year, so the pool's kind of limited. Uh, where I think Russ, I think we're going to see a different Russell Westbrook this season, and I think he's going to be a lot better version with this Lakers team this season. Um, but next up, Lonnie Walker, I think is going to be the real standout. I think he's going to be like the Malik Monk of last year, the guy that comes in and just really like 
we're all shocked and like, man, this guy can play. Uh, Lakers loved him for a reason. I mean, they gave him the taxpayer mid-level for a reason. Uh, not just did they give him the taxpayer mid-level, but he's shown the capability of shooting the ball, shooting the ball off the dribble, uh, getting to the basket, using his length on the defensive end and offensive end. He, to me, is going to be a more uh, a better Malik Monk. I think he's a guy that could come in, give us 15 a night, and also play solid defense and be a real two-way player. Where Malik Monk basically was just a scorer in a vacuum, right? If he scored and he was on, he was great. If he didn't, like that was it. But he was still giving up buckets, right? Where I think Walker, he's a guy that's going to be able to to guard the other team's best player if we need him to with a 6'10 wingspan. Uh, he's got the length, and we've seen him be able to disrupt. And I really think we're going to get to see some of that tonight as he kind of chased around Steph and stuff. Uh, he's even said that he's expected to guard Steph tonight. And so I think that that would be best just to have his length. I think he's going to be our, our real standout player this season. I think he's going to be a guy that we're like, okay, now we know why the Lakers gave him the taxpayer mid-level. Because that was a big question mark, right? Lonnie Walker? Really, Lonnie Walker? But like I said from day one is that like Lonnie Walker, you got to think Lonnie Walker was the second or third option on the Spurs. He went from being the second or third option to like the fifth or sixth option on the Lakers. Like whenever you get that kind of value – that's huge, right? And to get him at the price that they got him at, I really think he's going to be a huge impact guy this season. I think he's really going to help this team uh, get some W's in the win column. Uh, next up, defensive player. Now, you could put this for several people. I really think Max Christie is going to earn a rotation spot just on his defense. He is incredible defensively. And this might shock and surprise a lot of people, um, but Max Christie, go watch him play. In, in summer league and in preseason, he is so sound defensively. Already, he's already NBA level defense. Problem is, is his shot. He can't really shoot right now. He has good form. He's got a good looking shot. He just isn't able to knock it down. And I don't know if that's just the jitters and he's just kind of a little nervous. Uh, you know, he's a rookie in the league. I guarantee if he ends up becoming a reliable shooter and just being able to create his own shot, which he already can, like he's not bad at getting to the rim, not bad at like creating space and stuff. He just can't knock down the shot. And if as soon as he starts doing that, I really think he could be a real contributor on this team. He's already got incredible defensive skills. I mean, on his closeouts, the, the way he just, you know, recovers. Uh, when a guy, if a guy blows by him, he's right back there. I mean, he's got the length, the size, the speed, the everything to be a very good defensive player. And I think he if he earns rotation minutes, it's going to be because he's a defensive guy. I could see Darvin Ham having him uh, being, I don't think he's going to close games, right? I don't think like they're going to put him in, uh, you know, if, if, you know, the the Warriors have a last shot or something like that. I don't think that they'll go that route just because he's young and inexperienced. But if he's really good defensively, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. But I do see him getting minutes like early on. Like say, say it's the second quarter, there's like a minute left, two minutes left or whatever. We have a lead. You know, we're trying to hold on to the lead and have a, a positive going into the half. I could see Max Christie getting some burn. I could see uh, Darvin Ham throwing Max Christie in. Hey, get out there, go get us a couple stops. Like I could see him just as like a defensive specialist uh, for this team. And if he earns that as a rookie, he's got to be our, our defensive player of the year. He has to be. Uh, you know, I, I, I outside of that, if he doesn't, then that's when I'd put probably like the Patrick Beverly, maybe even Walker. Uh, if his defense, JTA, those are kind of our defenders, but. You know, I, this is this is kind of a sleeper pick. You know, I, I, if he if he really earns minutes, it's going to be because of defense. Just keep an eye on Max Christie this season. Seriously, just keep an eye on Max Christie. But MVP, Anthony Davis. Now, look, LeBron might still be our best player, but Anthony Davis is. Go We're going to go as far as Anthony Davis takes us. And I really think Anthony Davis knows. I think the league knows. I think fan knows. I think everyone knows. Anthony Davis needs to have an MVP level season. I think if he does, I think one, he's going to potentially win the MVP. And then thus he would be our MVP. But even if he doesn't, I don't care if he wins MVP with the league. I just need him to at least be in the conversation. Like, I don't care if he gets it, but he needs. we need a dominant Anthony Davis, right? There's a lot of concerns of, like, is he the franchise guy? Is he the guy that can kind of lead the charge and take over, and, and you know, once LeBron leaves? And so far, he hasn't been able to prove it. 
the bubble year, that Anthony Davis was arguably the best player in the league. Top three, top five. Just an incredible talent on both sides of the ball. His versatility, unbelievable. It's just like there's nobody like him in the league. The closest may be Embiid, a guy that can knock down the three ball, uh, you know, play defense, be a real two-way. Like Giannis, like is, don't get me wrong, best player in the league, but he can't shoot. And, and, you know, shoot off the dribble and, you know, knock down threes the way that Anthony Davis can. You know, not the way that Anthony Davis can. Anthony Davis is just an incredible talent. Can he play like it, though? And if he can, I think we win a lot of games. I think we are very good this season if he can play to that level. And so I think if he's playing to that level, he is hands down our MVP. I, I just, I don't, I don't think anybody else on this team can do everything that Anthony Davis can do and provide everything that Anthony Davis can provide, right? Can he stay healthy, though, too? We need at least 60-plus games from Anthony Davis. Uh, He has made it a personal goal where he wants to play uh, all 82. I don't think the Lakers would let him even if he could. Even if he was 100% healthy, I don't think the Lakers would let him play 82 games just because of that risk. But can he play, you know, like 65 games? Like, I, I could totally be okay with that. I like I I would I think if we if he plays 65 games I think we are you know a top 4 team in the West. I really do. I think we have potential to be a top 4 team in the West if he's playing at an MVP level and he plays at least 65 games cuz we're going to win most of those games. We're going to win more of those games than we're going to lose. He is just he's our ace. He's our he's our everything. We're going to go as far as Anthony Davis can carry us and take us. If he can take us far, I really think that we go far. Um but outside of MVP can't have a list without LeBron James and so LeBron I think is going to be is going to win the scoring title for the Lakers I wouldn't be shocked if he won the scoring title for the league um obviously he's trying to chase Kareem Abdul-Jabbar as the all-time leading scorer so I think that that's going to be a huge element to that uh he led the league in scoring last year uh he just didn't play enough games to qualify we need LeBron James to be healthy too LeBron's got to play games LeBron's got to play 60 plus games also if him and Davis play 60 plus games this team is easily a playoff team and I wouldn't be shocked if they're somewhere in the four or five range I don't think the Lakers are going to be are going to care about seeding I think the Lakers only care about getting to the playoffs and what I mean is like let's say let's say the Lakers are the sixth seed and they're like and there's three games left right and they're a game out of fourth place as the sixth seed Uh, But they're like three games uh, ahead of the seventh seed. So basically they're locked into the seventh seed. Or sorry, locked into the sixth seed. There's no way for them to go into the the seventh seed. I don't think the Lakers are going to kill themselves to try to go get that four seed. Like I don't. I just, I think the Lakers will stand pat three games left in the season. I wouldn't even be shocked if they rest the big three before they go. If they have their seeding locked in, I think that they just leave it. I think they just say, hey, as long as we get into the playoffs, who cares? We're going to have to go through all these guys anyway, so why does it matter? We need a healthy LeBron, a healthy Anthony Davis, a healthy Russell Westbrook, and just a healthy team in general, and I I like our chances against anybody. Um, I think LeBron is going to continue to have a monster year. I mean, he had a great preseason, and he hates preseason. He thinks preseason is a waste of time, and he doesn't take it serious. I mean, he said that himself, so I, uh, I think... He's, I think we're still going to have LeBron James. I think LeBron James is still going to be LeBron James. And if he is, I think, one, he gets the scoring title this year, and two, I think the Lakers are really good. So I think that he's going to end up leading us to uh, to the promised land, uh, him and Anthony Davis. But anyway, there's my list. Uh, let me know yours down in the comment section below. Uh, what, what spots would you slot some of these guys in? What do you think? Uh, is there any other categories that maybe I, I should have added that you would like me to add? Um However you feel, good, bad, ugly, somewhere in between. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down.